Okay, okay, Marathon 97. Man, we're so close to 100, it's getting ridiculous. I mean, 100 really doesn't matter, but it'll be kind of fun to get to 100 marathon videos. If you guys don't know what a marathon is, I don't know what it is either, but it's just something I started calling videos that have multiple stories in them. So we're about to hit 100. You could go back through my library and listen to all the marathon videos. Each one of them has at least two to five stories in them. And they're good. I've enjoyed doing all of them and maybe we'll get to 200 by next year. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna shut my mouth. We're gonna get on with some Bigfoot stories. All right, here we go. Here's a story from a guy who wants to keep his name out of it. Here's what he writes. This is really good. It's a hunting story. It's a real good hunting story. I served 23 years in the army. I retired in 2014. The last 13 years of my enlistment, I spent in the special ops community. I was trained to pay attention to every little detail and never back down from a challenge. I was stationed at Fort Campbell and it is famous for having big bucks. I love to deer hunt, and if you ask my wife, it's one of my biggest passions. My first experience with Bigfoot was in November of 2014. A buddy and I were bow hunting in an area near the flight line at Fort Campbell, and we both kept seeing a 180 or 190 class buck that we nicknamed Brutus. The rut was on, and the bucks were chasing does. I walked with my buddy to a new tree he was wanting to hunt from. If I followed him to his stand, I would know where he was just in case of an accident. In a light rain, I walked the rest of the way to my stand after he and I split up. I got to my tree an hour before daylight. After the sun came up, the temp started to drop and the rain began to freeze. I was cold, but I was dressed for the weather. No matter, I would have sat through a blizzard to get a shot at Brutus. The ice storm was getting worse as the day went on, and I had to keep knocking the ice off my bowstring just in case Brutus showed up. My buddy sent me a text later in the day to let me know that he was soaking wet and he needed to get back to the truck and put on some dry clothes. We had hunted most of the day, and by the time we got to the truck, I could see that the roads home were probably getting bad. So we decided to call it a day. However, we needed to get back into the woods to retrieve our stands. It was a two-mile walk back into the woods. We got my buddy's deer stand and then headed over to mine. We were walking up a fire break, and about two to 300 yards from us, we saw a figure walk into the opening. It was huge. It had to be eight feet tall, and I know it weighed at least 600 pounds. It only took one step into the fire break and it was already in the middle of it. I already had my phone out texting my wife letting her know that I would be home soon and I didn't think twice about it so I took a picture of the thing. When it saw us it turned back and went the way that it had come. When we got up to where we saw it I could see that my deer stand had been ripped off the tree and both pieces of it were twisted and bent up. That stand was rated to hold 300 pounds. I had left my doe estrus scent lures on it, so I guess that's what attracted the animal to my deer stand. It left footprints in the ice-covered ground. I wear a size 14 muck hunting boot, and the print was much wider and longer than my boot. The prints led into the cedar thicket, and I was wanting to follow the prints, but my buddy was hesitant because we only had our bows, and it was getting dark. We gathered up what was left of my deer stand and we went back to our trucks. When we got to the trucks, a game and fish officer was there along with two MPs. He asked what had happened to my deer stand and if I was okay. I told him what had happened and that I got a picture of this thing that demolished my stand. He wanted to see the picture. The game officer looked at it and then showed the MPs. He then told me that I wasn't authorized to take pictures on Fort Campbell property. 
He added that I was to delete the picture of the creature and the footprints. What could I do? I had to delete it there in front of him. He had the authority due to his federal status on the Fort Campbell base. Later, I looked it up to see if there really were regulations for taking pictures at Fort Campbell, and yes, there is, and it was due to the fact that Fort Campbell used to store nuclear missiles back during the Cold War. Little did he know that I had sent the pictures in a text to my buddy before we ran into him. My buddy and I were going to keep hunting that area no matter what because of the big bucks, and most of all, Brutus was still in there. After that day, the area we hunted was never open again for that season. Every time we tried to sign into the area, it would say that it was closed for troop training. I would drive by the area to see if any training was going on, and I never saw anything. I even got out of my truck once and walked 100 yards or so into the wood line, and I saw no evidence the area was being used. The game and fish people know about whatever is walking around in those woods at Fort Campbell. I had hard copies of the pictures, and my buddy has moved to another military base, but he's trying to find the pictures so that I can send them to you. Thank you for taking your time to tell other people's stories. I'll email you another story tomorrow, but uh, I never got another story from him, and I haven't seen any pictures or anything. I hope you get those pictures back and can maybe scan them and email them to me. If they are not the usual blurry <laughs> black blobs in the middle of the woods, if it shows some definition, I'll sure show them. I mean, that's the reason I don't show pictures is because none of them are ever any good. But uh, I suspect this may be. This thing was standing out in the middle of a fire break, and he got a, he got a picture of it. He should have a good defined photograph of this thing. Okay, great story. Thanks for sending out. I hope I get that other story from you to, uh, soon, and maybe those pictures, brother. Appreciate you. Here's a story from Adam. This is a good one. Here's what he writes. About 20 years ago, I was in a troubled marriage. We were living in Cleveland, Georgia, in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. The southern end of the Appalachian Trail was close to where I lived. To get away and forget about the troubles in my marriage, I would push my motorcycle down the driveway late at night while my wife slept, and I would coast down the road without cranking it so that I wouldn't wake her. Some guys do other things like find another woman, go out and party, but I wasn't interested in that and I had no interest in doubling my troubles. This therapy was all I wanted and it did a good job. During the hot summer months, I would throw a pair of shorts on and a t-shirt and head to the higher elevations where it was cool. When it would become too cold, I would pull over in my favorite spot overlooking the town. In the parking lot, a lectern-style placard had been installed to give a brief history of Cleveland, Georgia. I pulled off at my regular spot on the Richard Russell Scenic Highway. I lit a smoke and sat there thinking about my life and what was ahead of me. It was colder than normal, and I didn't want to leave. I guess I should have dressed warmer, but in my state of mind, I was not thinking ahead. I built a small fire in the parking lot to knock the chill off. I would have done about anything to prolong my time away from home, and it was something to occupy my mind as well. The fire grew, and I started to warm up a bit. The silence of the night was broken by a horrible scream in the distance. The sound came from in front of me, in the direction of Cleveland, and probably beyond. I knew that as the crow flies, it was two miles to the other side of the town. I heard it again, and it was almost as if I could feel it in my chest. The noise would start off like a man in horrible pain, but it would trail off as kind of a moan. I have never before or since heard anything like it. Every dog from miles around began to bark. This thing had started a ruckus, and it went on for ten minutes. And then the scream stopped, and eventually the dogs calmed down, and the night was dead silent again. I must say that that series of screams was so weird to me. 
I knew cows and other livestock made some strange sounds, and even at night, but this was different, and the sound carried from such a far distance. I wasn't worried. It was too far away. So I stood in front of the little fire, and I began to think about issues at hand again. Just as I was settling into some deep thought, another scream bellowed through those mountains. But this time, it was right behind me down the mountain. It was deeper and obviously louder. It actually rattled my teeth. I felt sick to my stomach with fear. To be honest, I don't remember ever being that afraid in my life. I didn't know what it was. Nothing registered in my mind as being familiar. I was stunned and shocked to the core, and I could not move. Right after the howl, I heard what sounded like a bulldozer with no engine tearing up the side of the mountain in my direction. The parking lot had woods to the left and to the right and a cliff directly off the edge of the parking lot. The road was on the other side, nothing but the slope of the mountains next to the road, and it was heading towards me. The moon was full, so there was plenty of light. I could see movement in the trees as this thing plowed through them. I just stood there between the fire and my bike like my feet were glued to the ground. I couldn't move. And there it was. A tree was shaking, and then a huge shadow appeared level with me in the moonlit parking lot. It wasn't until a couple of years ago that I figured out what this thing was. At the time, I thought it was a dark spirit or a shadow person. The reason I thought this is because when I saw it, it had no color. It was solid black, like a void. No light reflected off of this creature. There was no sheen to its body. There was no eye shine at all. The only thing I could make out was its form and shape and how it moved. Then a farmyard odor filled the air. Not the distinctive skunk and urine smell that some people claim are attributed with these creatures. Only a strong animal odor. It seemed as if this thing was connected to me and was preventing me from moving. Suddenly, it let me go. It released me, if you will. I could now move. I jumped on my bike and I cranked it, and I laid rubber until I hit the main road. I looked in my mirror as I sped away, and I saw the fire being pounded. When I felt like I was far enough away, I pulled over and I looked back. I wanted to get a look at it in the glow of the fire, not in the mirror. This thing was still stomping out the fire. The light from the fire lit up the legs of the creature and I could see its hair. I also saw its feet, which were very big. The whole scene was surreal, still shaking and nauseous over the ordeal. I released the clutch and I headed for home. That all happened 20 years ago. I've always believed in Sasquatch, but for the last 18 to 20 years, I did not think a Sasquatch is what I had encountered that night. Two years ago, I realized what it was. I started learning a lot more about these creatures, and I realized that the reason why I did not see anything but a form was because their hair absorbs light. What better camouflage if you are a nocturnal predator? So here's the breakdown of what I think actually happened. A nearly full moon allowed for better light for hunting. These things will run around in moonlit nights like deer run around in the cold weather to warm up. I came into its territory and the other animal from far away knew the whereabouts of this one's clan. I built a fire which brought attention to myself and from two miles away the other Squatch could see it. And that's what alerted the other one that was nearest to me. The other one waited for the dogs to stop barking so that it could not be mistaken when it yelled back in response. And then that one came over to investigate what the other one was screaming about. It plowed up the side of that mountain and it discovered me in its territory, having built a fire that could have burned down its home. Apparently, being somewhat fearful of me, it ran me off by using infrasound to make me scared and uneasy. As I left, he went over and put out the dangerous fire. When I discovered what this could have been some 20 years later, I felt those same familiar feelings all over again, and I realized that I indeed had an encounter with none other than a Sasquatch. 
I told my wife at the time that I had seen that creature, but I thought that it was a shadow person. I never went out in the middle of the night again. I thought that I was being punished for what I was doing. I am since divorced from her for many, many years, and I've grown a lot. No matter how much I've grown, I still have not outgrown the feelings that I had that night. Thank you for reading my story. I've always enjoyed your channel. Have a great life. Uh, Adam, thanks for the email. This, man, this was a great story. I, I don't think I've ever heard anything like this, but it brings in all of the things, little bits and pieces about Bigfoot that I've heard. And what he's done is he's reflected back on this encounter and he's put everything together. And I think the more these stories get told and the behaviors and the little nuances that happen when you encounter a Sasquatch, people are starting to take those things and put them together with their own encounters and things are starting to make sense to them. So I just think that's kind of cool. I mean, I could be all wrong about all that, but that's what it seems like to me. I mean, heck, I'm not a psychologist or a scientist or a rocket scientist or anything like that. But it just seems that way to me. So, Adam, thanks for the email, brother. You wrote a good story. I appreciate it. Thanks once again for listening to the video this far. Uh, once again, I say it every time I close the video. I appreciate you so much. I hope you guys have a great week, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks. Thanks.